everybody and uh, welcome to the Sustainable Napier Committee meeting for the 10th of February 2022. And I will ask our CEO, Steph Rokarangi, to uh, open with a karakia, please. In noi tātou, tūtawa mai e ronga, tūtawa mai e raro, tūtawa mai e roto, tūtawa mai e waho, ki ātou ai te maire tū, te maire ora, ki te katoa, haumie, huie, taikie. Thank you. Uh, just uh, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the Council Facebook page. Do you have any apologies? Um, Councillor Tarpani doesn't seem to be online. So has he put an apology in, is it? I haven't heard from him, sorry. Does anyone have an apology from him? I haven't heard I from just, him. Uh, yeah. I thought I, I understand thought that he was on leave till the eleventh of February. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so I'm happy to move the apology. Okay, moved and seconded by Councillor Mawson. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Um, is there any conflicts of interest? No. So we have a public forum. Juliet Gregg from Latham Street Pedestrian Crossing Island Petition is going to speak to us. Juliet, you have 10 minutes and, uh, and uh, you can start now. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so just so you know, it's only going to be two and a half minutes. So I'm not going to hang about. <laughs> um, <laughs> so good morning, um, everybody. My name is Juliet Gregg. I live in Nelson Crescent, Napier South, and I'm the mum of two boys who are aged eight and five, and they attend Nelson Park School. Um, firstly, thank you to Napier City Council for this opportunity to speak today at the, um, at the Sustainable Napier meeting. Thank you to Councillor Bogue for presenting my letter and petition to the Council and to the Transportation Engineer Saha Poor for the report on Latham Street. Um, in December last year, I organised a petition for a pedestrian crossing island on Latham Street, Napier South, near McLean Park Stadium to help children cross the road on their way to school and on the way back from school. Many parents um, absolutely refuse to let their children scoot or walk to school on their own because they are afraid of the perceived danger of um, road safety on Latham Street. Um, pages. Um, so here is the petition that I um, organized uh, there. Um, there are 52 signatures. The signatures include parents from the school and also residents who live close to Nelson Park. Um, that is to say the streets including Nelson Crescent, McVeigh Street, Morris Street, Vigor Brown Street, McDonald Street, Ashridge Road. Um, I knocked on doors in these streets to get signatures um, and out of the 53 that I asked, 52 signed it. Uh, they were fully in support. The first signature is from Pip Simmons, who is the principal of Nelson Park School, um, who acknowledges that many parents won't let their kids scoot or bike to school on their own or walk because of Latham Street. Um, so in conclusion, thank you to Napier City Council for this opportunity to speak today. And I appreciate the time and effort that you have already put into addressing this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is uh, there any questions? Deputy Mayor Brosnan. Ah, kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora, Julie. Thank you for your presentation. Um, just a quick question from me. Have you done, um, I suppose, any anecdotal research on if the proposal that you're requesting, go, you know, was to become, um, that more children would, like more parents would be happy to send their children? Is this the, yeah, the yeah, defining yeah. issue? Yeah, um, I know two mums personally who um, who would let their children walk to school. Um, so that's just me. I'm just a snapshot. Um, so obviously, if I know two, there's going to be a lot. Um, I imagine dozens. Um, but there's one mum in Ashridge Road who has a nine year old and she won't let her child walk to school, but he wants to, but she won't let him. Um, and she said that she would if there was some sort of way of him crossing more easily. So that's my just just a snapshot of what I, I know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any other questions? Mia Wise. 
Uh, morning, uh, Juliet, and thank you for your presentation. Now, um, we do have a paper that we're considering today, and I'm sure you've read through that, yep. and um, that paper is not recommending a full-blown pedestrian crossing yep. as such for various reasons, and we're looking at other options. So um, just really testing with you if um, one of those other options that we're considering, would, would that, do you feel... Yep. Um, be adequate or, or yeah, um, alleviate the concerns. Yeah, the yeah. Um, anything you do is better than nothing. So if there's something that makes it easier, that's cool. I'll be so happy and the parents will be so happy. So I realise Latham Street is difficult um, from the road safety engineer's report. It is a difficult one. Um, and I see you've considered it in the past. Um, so anything you do that makes it better is great. So um, we'd be just really grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Juliet. That's um, uh, well done. And as you can see that we are going into a paper on this, um, the first item on the agenda. Okay, thank, so thank you. you. You might want to jump onto Facebook now and watch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any announcements by the Mayor? Uh, yes, I did just want to acknowledge that this week is the first year anniversary of our Chief Executive. Uh, so we can't keep calling her our new Chief Executive now, I don't think. I don't think she qualifies as new anymore. And just wanting to really acknowledge that when Steph joined us at this time last year, she really had, had to hit the ground running. Um, and it's been fantastic having her on board and helping us navigate through all the challenges that we faced last year. So um, you've stuck around, Steve. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> Hopefully that's an indication that you're here to stay for some years to come. Um, and I just really wanted to acknowledge that today. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we won't sing happy birthday, but um, well done. Uh, I have no announcements. Uh, is there any notification of minor matters not on the agenda? Okay. Announcements by management. Uh, the CE has a, an announcement. No? I don't, don't believe I have any announcements today. Thank you. I'm still um, just a bit taken aback by Mia Wise's kind words. Thank you. Oh, okay. I, um, I thought you might have made an announcement on item five that's been withdrawn. That's, um, that's correct. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. So um, I can make that announcement on your behalf that at this stage, um, item five has been withdrawn and there will be an extraordinary meeting of sustainable environment committee on the 17th of February to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Deborah Stewart, do you have an announcement? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I've just got a few updates on some water projects that I'm just going to run through for you. Um, apologies for the reading of the notes, but as you know, water game is a, a bit of a new um, area for me. So I'll just run through the, the five projects, which are, a mix, which are a mix of big and small ones. So the first one is the low manganese um, drinking water. We're currently working on the new bore at Awatoto. Um, over the next few weeks, we'll be flow testing the water there. A treatment plant has been constructed off site and will be moved onto the site soon. A bore is planned to be up and running in June. In Taradale, we're in the early stages of constructing a bore and treatment plant. Both new bores are vital to our need for low manganese water to eliminate the dirty water issues. Um, so that's the low manganese one. Pandora Trade Waste Pipeline, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, which services the industrial trade sites in Pandora and discharges to the wastewater treatment plant in Awatoto. It's been out of service for a number of years due to a buildup on the inside wall of the pipeline. The pipeline is about 400 mil in diameter and 8.5 kilometers long. Work is underway to unblock the pipeline, restoring it to its original condition. Once recommissioned, it will be bought online and used for its original purpose of conveying trade waste to the wastewater treatment plant. The contract has been written and the drawings completed and once approved, this will be going out for tender to potential contractors. We've had a number of contractors uh, approach us since the word, since sorry, since the report in the Stuff News article just prior to Christmas. And um, the airport pump station, I'm sure you've all been watching that as you've been passing. We're replacing the wastewater pump station located at the airport to improve our levels of service 
increase the resilience of the network, and most importantly, reduce any risk of untreated wastewater getting into the estuary. During the construction phase, there may be elevated noise levels coming from the site and some discharge of clean water onto the land and into the waterway. At some stages during the project, pumps could be operating 24 hours a day. The project is intended to be completed by July this year. We've got some smart manholes, um, which I think there's been a little bit of um, press release on recently. Across Napier, um, 50 manholes are getting their own brains. So that'll, that'll be a great thing. Sensors are being installed inside the manholes to warn council staff when a drain is getting too full or reaching its capacity. This can be an indicator of a blockage or a fault further up the system or higher than usual flow. The sensors are relatively inexpensive and are housed in boxes made in New Zealand using a 3D printer. They send signals to a satellite, which in turn sends a message to the monitoring system. There are 20 currently installed with thorough testing now taking place. A similar system has been trialled and installed in Tauranga and Taupo. The wastewater treatment plant containment cells, um, which were recently reported to the Tenders Committee, the capacity of the wastewater treatment plant upstream and the pumping station are restricted by the capacity of the outfall. This means during times of heavy rain, the wastewater backs up in the system and overflows. The installation of new storage areas will mean capacity for extra temporary storage, Wastewater will be held in the storage areas until there is capacity available in the system. It is not expected wastewater will be stored for more than three days at a time. In this case, the wastewater will be highly diluted. They will also be used when repairs need to be carried out on parts of the wastewater treatment system. So just an update there. Thank you, um, Mr Chair. You're on mute, Kate. You're on mute. I had to go on mute because my dogs were barking. <laughs> um, so any questions, was it? Okay, do I have a mover for the minutes of Sustainable Napier meeting uh, held on the 11th of November 2021? Moved by Councillor Crystal, seconded by Councillor Mawson. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Right, we'll move on to item one. And Robin Melly, I believe this is on the pedestrian crossing island, Latham Street. Thank you, Chair. Um, kia ora koutou. Um, just um, point out that while well, Sahar did um, pull this report together, um, I've agreed to present it today. It's, it's Sahar's first report, so throwing her in the deep end uh, for an online meeting felt a little bit unfair, but Sahar is here um, to um, answer any of the curly questions that I can't um, respond to. Um, thank you ever so much for um, Juliet presenting um, and very much appreciate your comments on, on Sahar's report. Um, it um, shows the system's working, I think. Um, so... As, as the report states, um, the petition isn't the, the first time that we've given consideration to um, active modes on, on Latham Street. Um, we had quite detailed investigation in previous years into cycle lanes along Latham Street. Um, now they would have included measures to, to improve um, crossing as well as traveling along the street, but um, it, did turn out to have some very expensive um, elements to it. And I was looking over sort of a million, million and a half dollars. Um, it hasn't been shelved, but it has been put on a back burner um, while we think we can get um, some greater improvements around the network for, for lower investment. Um, that said, um, all of the officers who've, who've looked at the petition and have given it consideration absolutely agree with... Um, the petitioner's um, request. Um, there could certainly be work done which will improve um, the ease of crossing and certainly the safety of crossing um, in, in that block. Um, unfortunately, with the time we had between um, receipt of the petition and presenting to you today, we haven't been able to develop up um, options um, and cost them up fully. So it's, it's very much a case of um, seeking your approval really to, to continue with investigations 
and to um, make a judgment call on, on whether those um, investments are in line with, with our normal investment um, protocols. Um, we do think we could we could get some real significant improvement for um, children, well, and all, all, all pedestrians and, and cyclists and, and scooter users um, traveling that sort of north-south direction th through to Nelson Park and um, not forgetting that we've got McLean Park there as well and Nelson Park, which are all used by um, significant numbers of pedestrians accessing them, whether it's for events, rugby games, um, Saturday cricket um, or the daily school um, trip. Um, so, yeah, I'm certainly happy to take any questions. Um, we, we, we do think that the, the more likely um, intervention would be curb build-outs. Um, so there's a shorter single stage crossing rather than a, a, an island, um, primarily because the island will um, have to be pushed further and further away from the intersection. Um, just due just to the realignment of the, of the traffic lanes. Um, so, um, and as we know, people will take the shortest and easiest route. So if you have to travel 50 meters down the road to get to a, a pedestrian island, a certain percentage of people will do that, but a certain percentage will just carry on doing what they've always done. Um, and the idea is obviously to make it as easy as possible. So we're just seeking your approval to continue with uh, investigations uh, and then to work through the ward councillors and the petitioner um, in terms of taking it to that next stage. Um, as detailed in the report, if it does look like it's going to be a, a higher cost intervention, then it would have to be brought back to the, the annual plan or the long term plan process um, for approval. Robin, uh, just one question. Do we have a timeline for a result to the petitioner and the um, uh, councillors? Uh, in, in terms of um, continuing a couple of design options and getting them costed up? Um, yeah, yes. Probably four to six weeks. Um, it's, it's not a, a particularly in-depth exercise. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Councillor Crystal, did you? Yes. As I live significantly quite close to this. Um, the, um, so you're looking at doing this um, quite close to that intersection of um, that shown in the um, picture? Morris Street. Of like Latham Morris and Morris, is that right? Yes. Is there a particular side of the intersection that's better than the other? Uh, the the McLean Park side would tend to be a little bit easier, um, mm -hmm. just because there are there are fewer um, house frontages there. Yeah. Um, okay. But we, we we will look at potentially, and I don't think there's width there, but possibly putting an island in the side roads as well, like a splitter island. You'll have seen quite a lot of those going in in the last couple of years. Um, they just assist to slow traffic down and if we are putting a facility on one side of an intersection we need to make sure people can safely get to it so that would be part of the investigation okay cool. any other questions Councillor McGrath yes just through the chair to, to, to Robin Malley um, is this situation similar to what we had a few years ago in Taradale, um, outside Atafai, um on Gloucester Street there? As, as far as, you know, uh, traffic, kids trying to cross, where to put an island, what to put. Is it a similar situation? Uh, through you, Chair, slight, hopefully slightly less involved. Um, we had the issue of the bus stop um, at Atafai, Um And... We uh, were probably more restricted in terms of what we could do, which is why we went for that central island. Um, so it, that ended up being quite an involved job. Um, I think this should be a slightly simpler um, resolution. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Yeah, Morena. Um, 
just Robin, you mentioned that this has already been deprioritized because there's other projects that had better bang for buck. Just wondering if we direct you to change your focus onto this project, um, what will be, is it, can you tell us what will be um, dropped off or what will be deprioritized for this to go ahead? Uh, so through you, Chair, sorry, the, um, the work that was deprioritized was um, creation of protected cycle lanes the full length of Latham Street, um, which was a really major um, work that would have in involved rebuilding the curb and channel all the way along, uh, reallocating parking, the loss of some parking. So there would have been quite extensive consultation involved. Um, so that was, we, we were actually looking at that, I think, um, probably three years ago. This was a pre-LTP um, consideration, and that's why it didn't didn't go forward. Um, in terms of what work may not go ahead if we um, are able to fit this in this year, um, we would just look at our um, sort of traffic management budget. We've also got um, some much smaller um, pots in um, sorry, pots is a poor term. Uh, <laughs> amounts in walking and cycling budget um, which aren't fully allocated some of those will carry forwards to um, accommodate works associated with other wide projects um, so so there, there were um, con contributing budgets for wider projects um, which haven't necessarily been required um, so uh, I am in the process at the moment of reprioritizing all the um, capital spend now that the big projects that were carried forward from last year um, have been um, completed so we can actually see where we're at with all of our budgets. Can I, Thank you. Excuse me, Chair, can I have a follow-up question? Um, so just the four to six weeks then that you think this will take um, to get it done, are you saying it's kind of insignificant in terms of what will need to be pushed right? Uh, through you, Chair, the four to six weeks will be for the investigation, design, and getting an understanding of what the, the relevant costs are. Um, if it was then determined to construct it, it would then have to slot into the rest of our construction programme, um, which I'm not in a position to commit to at the moment. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Councillor Crown. Thank you, through the chair, just a couple of quick questions. Um, I was wondering if the funding, once you've done the design, et cetera, and the investigation, if the funding exceeds what's currently available in budget, is there funding available through Waka Kotahi for such projects? Uh, through you, Chair, the, um, this work will qualify for uh, Waka Kotahi funding, but it will only be um, sort of investment support. So we'd get 50, 51%. So it would, it would clar classify as, as walking and cycling improvements or road to zero safety improvements. Um, so we, we will, any, anything that it does cost council will only cost a net 49% of that. Um, we wouldn't do it unfunded. Fantastic, thanks Robin. And just one more um, through the chair. Um, I'm just wondering what sort of provision is given in the investigation stage to accessibility? So for our um, disability community, those with mobility um, issues, et cetera. So again, through you chair, anything that we design now um, does give um, full regard to accessibility guidance. Um, so if, if we create new drop curbs, for instance, or anything, any, any new features, they will all have, appropriate um, tactile pavers, they'll all have appropriate um, upstands for tapping rails, for instance, uh, and appropriately illuminated. So that's just part of the design standards nowadays. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yeah, through you, um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, question for uh, Robin. Uh, the question is around about um, 
vehicle counts or cycle counts or pedestrian counts. And I understand that there are obviously parents that are reluctant to allow their children to wander through that area. And I'm, I'm bearing in mind that we've talked about Nelson Park School, but of course there's also uh, Napier Intermediate, which is probably um, a school that takes those children later in their life. Um, so we're talking quite a long period of, of time, but do we have an understanding of the pedestrian counts or the cycle counts in that area? Uh, through you, Chair, no, we, we, haven't, we haven't done those exercises now. Um, again, it's a little bit um, of a build it and they would come um, as, as, as Juliet stated, you know, obviously we've got anecdotal evidence to say that people are sort of holding their children back and saying, no, you're not walking to school or you're not scooting to school because we don't want you crossing that road. Um, we do find that, that when facilities go in, we do see numbers increase. Um, but yeah, very, very difficult to, to understand latent demand. Um, and of course, uh, as you say, particularly with the intermediates, they're only there for two years. So you can actually see um, habits change very, very quickly. So you might have a, a year's worth of kids who are sort of coming from the south there. And we might find we've got 45 kids a day crossing there. Um, and six months later or a year later, we may find a completely different number. Um, because it's such a sort of transient population in, in just through those two years. With Nelson Park School, of course, there's a much, much longer period, so we can sort of get those um, habits um, built in, but only if parents are really comfortable with, with letting their kids walk and cycle to school. Um, I, I, I don't generally... Um, there's, there are a few situations where we will look at the number of potential walkers and cyclists, um, usually in a, in a well-built up suburban area where we've got things like schools within a couple of hundred metres, um, event spaces like McLean Park and reserves such as Nelson Park, then um, generally that, that will be enough um, to, to, to promote that, that use. Sorry, a bit of a non-answer there, Councillor. It'd be fair to say that um, you're pretty happy that it's a busy road. Well, certainly it's a busy enough road. Um, yeah. the, the numbers needing to cross and needing to cross at that point is, is the bit that's harder to, to pin down. Okay, do we have any other questions? Uh, I've got my hand up, Councillor Price, not to ask Sorry. But if yes. there's no other questions, I'm happy to move the motion. Okay. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Bogue. So you uh, would you want to speak on that now? Oh, look, just to say really yeah. from my perspective that this is a no-brainer. We're talking about fifteen to thirty thousand dollars, which we can accommodate within existing budgets and create a safer crossing for our youth. Um, so fully support the motion. Councillor Bailey, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, I would. I would like also to support the motion and I'd like to thank Juliet and the people who signed her petition for drawing our attention to the safety issue. I'd like to thank the staff for picking up um, the suggestion and offering to investigate um, a solution. And um, this kind of um, resolution and our support for it shows that we're listening and that we really care about the safety of our most vulnerable citizens. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, Mia Wai, is your right to reply? Okay, so all those in favour of the officer's recommendation, please say aye. Against? Carried. Okay, second item. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Brian Faulkner, the uh, lease of Reserve Omni Gym Centre um, Incorporated. Are you there, Brian? We're in real sun problems. Yes, good morning. You hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so this item uh, just seeks final approval from Council to grant a ground lease to Omni Gymnastics. Um, for both the existing, the footprint of their existing building plus provision for 
uh, proposed extension. The matter's already been before Council. Council has previously approved this in principle. Um, we publicly notified the proposed lease as required under the Reserves Act, received no submissions, so um, suggested that it's now appropriate for Council to um, grant, the, uh, grant the lease. Obviously, the construction of the extension will still be subject to the centre obtaining all required regulatory consents. Thank you. Do we have any questions? No questions? Do I have a mover, please? If you could say your name, because I haven't got everyone on my board. Councillor McGrath, was you, were you moving that? Yes. Happy and to second. Seconded by um, Deputy Mayor Rosner. Do you wish to speak, Richard? Uh, yeah, just briefly, um, I'd like to congratulate the club for, for uh, making some forward progress here. And just the, as they go forward, they just keep working with council um, over, over various things, you know, including landscaping and, and, and other issues we may be able to assist or direct if, we are, if we're going to um, inherit the ongoing um, care and maintenance, then I, I guess we'd, it'd be neat to be able to work with these guys. And again, just the, what they offer the community through the gymnastics is... Um, fantastic for our city and I wish them the best of luck. That's all. Um, Deputy Mayor Brosner? Yeah, just briefly to say it was good um, to, to see the club uh, formally make their applications through council uh, for the extension there and that there were no objections um, received when it was open for submissions. And I think that's a credit to the work that the, the club is doing on the ground uh, with their neighbours. And, and thank you to Brian. I know you've worked with the club to get them um, to this point as well. So I think it's a, it's a great start for them in their future plans. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comments? Yeah, I'd like to speak in support. Um, just reading through the paper, it was actually quite awesome to see how big they actually are, like 29 coaches um, and 647 recreational gymnasts and some competitive ones there. I mean, this is brilliant. We're, we're always, as a community, asking for more things for youth and uh, just to see how many people are actually there and the facility that they provide uh, for our young, especially um, kindergarten and, and pre uh, preschool, uh, young school. Yeah. Primary school, that's great. I've supported you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we have three positives. Um, does anyone wish to speak against it? Okay, Councillor McGrath, do you want to give a right of reply to anything? No, it's all good, all positive. Okay, so all those in favour of the office recommendation, please say aye or thumbs up and against. Carried. Thank you very much, Brian. Item three, report on Napier water supply. Uh, status end of 2021-22, um, uh, quarter two. Um, Enzi. Yeah, so good morning, Mr. Chair. You are. Good Thank morning, you. Mr. Chair, Mayor, councillors and members of the public. Uh, so my report is operational in nature, so I will take it as read. However, I would like to uh, make an update on this section 3.3, where I talked about the Mara ROI uh, drafts, the documents like the, the new legislation coming up. Since the report has been compiled, there's been a further development. The Mara ROI has released final drafts, which are, up, which are now up for public consultation which closes on 28th of March. Uh, and obviously, as you know, HDC, NCC, Wairoa and Central Hawks Bay are looking to um, do a joint submission on that. And we will be providing a professional um, a submission on that. So uh, I'm happy to take any other questions in regards to the report. Okay, any questions, please? If you've got your hand up, I mightn't see it. So um, at this stage, I can't see any questions. Okay, do I have a, um, a mover for this paper, please? 
Council Pope, is that you? No? I'm happy to move. Um, oh, okay. Moved by Councillor yeah. Simpson, seconded by Councillor Crystal. You wish to speak uh, on it, Councillor Simpson? I need to say that the report speaks for itself, and I'm, I thank uh, Anzi for his update that um, there is now a public submission process available to us. Thank you. Councillor Crystal? Um, I'm going to... Um, quote Councillor McGrath and say it's nice to see lots of ticks in um, boxes and just to note that you know the report does show an increase over summer of the dirty water complaints which we know is from our A1 bore and so it's been really good to hear this morning from Deborah that um, hopefully we have a new bore coming on um, in the near future that will ho hopefully um, eliminate that issue. Thank you. Is anyone else which wish to speak? No? Councillor Simpson, write a reply? No, I'm satisfied. Okay, so all those in favour of um, uh, the officer's recommendation, please say aye or raise your thumb. Against? Carried. Thank you, Angie. Very good. The next item is capital program delivery and uh, John Kingsford. Got a tato, Morena, everyone. Uh, good to see you all online. Um, so, uh, just speaking to the capital program delivery report, our six weekly update on uh, progress with regard to delivering capital program. Um, uh, it's a, uh, I guess the the big part of this report is the uh, the background summary with the 2022 state of play, uh, highlighting some of the challenges associated with local regional, national, and, uh, and, and wider challenges around um, our industry and delivery of projects. And um, the Morrison Lowe report on um, challenges associated with construction sector constraints is also attached to this report for further bedtime reading. Um, in summary, what that does uh, identify is about $4.7 billion worth of uh, capital work to be completed in the Hawke's Bay in the next three years of which more than 50% of it's unlikely to occur due to those construction sector constraints. So um, it's a pretty challenging time uh, for all to um, be involved in, in delivery of, um, of build work. Uh, we're going on just to note a few, uh, few milestones, um, projects going to tender, uh, Kennedy Road Cycleway, uh, Onslow Steps replacement, um, uh, these are looking to go to tender in this reporting period. Um, Hyderabad Road sewer renewal, uh, that uh, is just in question in terms of the design at the moment, so maybe a correction on that at a later date. Um, nearing Projects nearing completion, uh, uh, well, Centennial Floor Hall is uh, now has a new floor. Uh, the total contract uh, is not completed yet because we're now moving into replacing the, um, the lighting in that hall. Um, a few other notable ones, York Auckland intersection improvements, um, Roberts Terrace Playground, uh, signed off on the practical completion on that yesterday. So uh, quite a different cross-sectional projects there um, and good to see uh, those milestones being achieved. Uh, physical works commencing on a, on a few more projects. Deborah's already uh, mentioned the airport wastewater pump station renewal project. It's a pretty complex project uh, and will be good to see that one uh, underway and, and completed in, in due course. Uh, a few other initiatives uh, currently underway. In um, previous conversations, we've talked about um, panels. So I'm pleased to announce that uh, we now have completed and appointed five consultants to our panel of project management service providers, which will greatly increase our capacity of project management skill and um, capability uh, for delivery of program. Um, and if they haven't yet, they must be getting pretty close. The Three Waters team are about to finalise their professional services panel for, for Three Waters. Um, so that's that's a good milestone and um, probably uh, can't come soon enough. We'll, we'll be working with those con um, consultants to um, uh, discuss kickoff and allocation of more projects in the next reporting period. Uh, we've talked about industry capacity as, as a bit of an issue. 
Um, uh, and so uh, we'll continue to report on any challenges that we face or um, uh, look to address as we move forward um, with each reporting period. So that's the summary. Uh, there's obviously a table attached um, with uh, updates on some projects and rather than and speak to individual projects, uh, perhaps I'll just ask for questions on any of those or, or anything else in the report at this point. Thank you. Thanks, John. Do we have any questions, please? Councillor Bogue. Yes, thank you, John. Gosh, what a lot, lot going on at the moment, and it's great to see it laid out so clearly. Um, I've just got a couple of questions about two of the, um, the projects, just, to, and just a, a bit of a clarification on um, the Mariwa Shops, which says the project will be rescoped, and the Kennedy Road Cycleway. What, what is that exactly? There is a cycle lane there already, and I just wondered what we were thinking of doing to that. Sure. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Bogue. Um, so uh, the first question was with regard to marine, pro, um, sorry, yeah. marine shops. So uh, you might recall we went through a process of designing up a, um, a, a pretty complex solution there. Uh, when we came to estimate time, it was significantly over budget and so needed a rethink in terms of um, uh, either finding more budget or reduction or change in scope in order to bring costs uh, back to within um, uh, an affordable margin. So um, that is currently with the transport team um, for consideration. Uh, with regard to Kennedy Road Cycleway, uh, I believe that that cycleway section is uh, in, a, in an area where um, we, we don't currently have um, an off-road cycleway and um, it is facing some, um, while well, you think a cycleway wouldn't be that complex, uh, at the point where we have to break ground to construct it, then we have um, a, a number of challenges with underground utilities and so on and so forth, um, particularly where we might have to install additional drainage features. So um, it's, it's the underground section that's been complex in its design. Um, I can circulate um, some more details on, on what that stretch is at a later date. I, just, I don't have that in front of okay. me right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor McGrath? Just through the chair, um, John, you mentioned the Centennial Hall floor um, has been completed, which is awesome. Um, but do you have a time period you could share with us as to how long it's going to take for the uh, lighting to be completed? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Councillor McGrath. Through you, Mr Chair. Um, I'll try and shed some light on that. Um, we have just signed the contract with, uh, with the contractor and I believe it's a, a six to eight week program of work to complete that. Um, all, all things going well. Thank you. You're welcome. Good, qu good question, Councillor McGrath. Yeah, just a question when we're talking about the lighting. Um, is the lighting to a standard that television can operate from the hall? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to you, Mr. Chair, uh, I'll, I'll have to go take that question away and uh, and come back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, I've got one, Councillor Price. Yep. Uh, Deputy Mayor Brosnan. And then thank Council you, through you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, John, just a quick question from me around um, how you determine what goes on this list. And I know a number of things have come off um, in the last um, few reports. And I'm just wondering, obviously when things are completed, they're taken off, but work in progress, do, do you sort of have a, you'll present to us stuff that's happening in the next six months or the next year, or how do you determine what goes on and what doesn't? That's my, my first um, question. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um... Uh, there's no uh, fixed formula on, on what uh, goes in here, perhaps more uh, higher risk or higher value or more um, public facing projects. And I just realised that uh, our Ahiriri Regional Park has fallen off the bottom of the spreadsheet. Uh, my apologies for that. It was not intentional. That's right. Gosh, you can read my mind sometimes. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great minds think alike, Councillor Brosnan. Um, and, and my other quick question is, would it be simple um, or would it be 
possibly not simple if we were to add a column in there that would give an estimated completion date. I know we've tried to kind of give a staging with the percentage, but um, just listening to the other questions, and when I read through it, I, I think, okay, we might be 5% through, but does that mean we're two years away or a year away or three months away from completion? Through you, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll have a look into that. It's a, it's a mat, this report is um, extracted out of out of cycle, uh, and it's a matter of um, whether that information's in a in a readily e easily read, readable field, or whether it would have to be manually extracted or out of the schedule and, and cycle. So, if I could take that away and come back to you, um, we also do have our um, ninety day report that we're working on that identifies uh, what we expect to complete in that period. Obviously, with the uh, with the way the economy is at the moment, it would be difficult, would it, to give an accurate timeline? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we'll have more certainty of completion dates once we enter into contracts for for physical works. Um, notwithstanding that they are, you know, subject to to variations uh, and extensions of time for valid reasons. Um, some of those might be weather, um, if they're outside projects, um, COVID and, and lockdowns and, and so on have impacted projects in the past. So, um, but we, you know, our, our, once we're into contract, we do have a schedule that we can um, give a, a, a reasonably accurate uh, forecast on completion date. When we're in a period where even under plan and execute, we might be in, in design phase and uh, haven't gone to market to procure the physical works contractor or whatever that might be, um, then it's a lot more difficult uh, and might be subject to um, industry conditions at that point. Yeah, I think the request by Deputy Mayor Brosnan is a good one because um, it is what people like to know when something's going to happen or finish. Uh, uh, granted, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Taylor. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. Could I just request that um, through you, John, the um, George's Drive to Wellesley planning could be presented to the Cycle Governance Group, which meets on Monday, so that we can give them that information um, as part of the Cycleway network around Napier. If um, Robin could do that through you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, uh, Councillor Taylor. I'll liaise with Robin and um, we'll uh, present to that group um, in, in due course, whether it's it's Monday or, or the next meeting, uh, but we will circle around and meet with that group. Okay. Great way to get an appointment, Councillor Taylor. Um, any other questions? Who have I got the Mayor? Uh, just here with regards to the construction sector constraints report from Morrison Lowe, it's a really, really useful and good report. Um, and obviously it is now publicly available through um, our website as part of this agenda. But just wanting to know if there's an intention to actually put this somewhere on our website that's accessible so we can direct people with any questions around um, these particular uh, challenges that we're facing this year um, to this report because it does clearly articulate um, what we're facing um, with our projects over the um, upcoming year and, and further out. Through you, Mr Chair, uh, that just sounds like a great idea as opposed to a question. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at that or take that offline and, and see if we can put that, well, we will be putting that on our website at your suggestion. Thanks. Thanks. This is very good. good. Any other questions? Okay, well, I'm, I'll move the uh, paper from the chair and seconded by Councillor Simpson. Um, I think um, from my point of view, it's been, uh, it's a good paper. Uh, we've come up with a couple of good points from our Mayor and Deputy Mayor. Fantastic to see our leadership, showing leadership. And, um, and I've got nothing really further to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. Councillor Simpson? 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I think um, the report has come a long way. It's matured well over the last two and a half years from its development. I think it now does reflect and it demonstrates to us as we move around our district, um, there are a large number of capital projects that are now well underway and we've watched them migrate through this reporting process from the inception through to now delivery. And I think it's an excellent tool for us uh, to demonstrate to our residents and ratepayers that um, this council is about getting things done. So thank you very much, John, for your effort in producing the report and keeping it updated for us. Thank you. I'd, um, just as my closing part, I'd like to reiterate that um, it has, it's, it's getting to where we want to be, and that's fantastic. Okay, so um, all of those in favour of uh, receiving this report, please put your finger up or say aye. Against, carried. So I'll adjourn uh, the Sustainable Napier Committee meeting for five minutes. And my watch has just gone funny. So we'll re-adjourn at 9.55. Is that all right, Deputy Mayor? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So thank you.